Hello friends, welcome to PySpark video tutorials. In this ongoing real-time scenario based videos, today I'm going to give you one of the real-time scenario is how to generate sequence IDs. So when you're working primarily on data warehousing project and when it comes to analytics, big data analytics project, uh, when it comes to dimension modeling, so we need a surrogate key. So as per a dimension model architecture, so we need to generate a surrogate key. So how to generate sequence ID, or you can say surrogate key, surrogate key in PySpark. So this is one of the common option and uh, we should have a uh, own surrogate key for a dimension modeling in target data warehouse. And uh, how many ways which we can generate and what are the options are available and what is the best option for surrogate key so when it comes to pyspark pyspark is providing a own function to generate uh, integer values sequence ids that is called monotonically increasing id so this is one of the function which we can use so another one is uh, row number so row number is one of the window function which we can use it's a window function and the third one is uh, CRC32 is available. CRC32 is one of the function. And uh, MD5 also is one of the function. SHA2. SHA2 also. And SHA1 and SHA2. SHA1 and SHA2. So these many functions are available to generate a surrogate key. Like a uh, how to generate and uh, what are the output like when you are using this what are the best options and which one is the best for huge data projects let's understand one by one with example then you will get more clarity on which one is best for big data projects mainly when you are working on big data projects which one is best for to avoid duplicate to avoid common uh, issues in production environment let's start with uh, creating one data frame and uh, I'm going to create one data frame here. How to get or how to generate sequence ID in PySpark. So I'm going to create one data frame using employee data file. So which is already available in my workspace. Just I'm going to create employee data frame spark.read.csv which is available in my file store tables in play.csv. It is CSV file, so header is available, so header true. And we can infer the schema using infer schema. And file is having some null records and duplicate records. So we will apply metadata data validations. So if it is having a NULL, we can treat as a null value that and after that, even we can apply removing null records, like a drop and name. If it is all null records, so remove those null records and the drop duplicates. So here employee number is unique. I remove duplicates based on employee number. Let's show you the data first. Let me show you the data and display. Let's consider this is employee uh, table, which is having employee numbers. So whenever you're working on data warehousing project, your sources will be OLDP. OLDP means majorly ERPs. So ERPs will be having a primary key. So based on that primary key, which we can generate surrogate key, which is sequence generated IDs. So one of the option is which we can generate monotonically increasing ID. So which we can generate sequence id using which we can add a new column using a with column which is id column i will add so i'm going to use uh, this function and which we can import this function from icebog dot sql dot functions import monotonically increasing id then I will display this data frame. You can see that uh, 
surrogate key is added or not. Okay, now you see ID column is added and the sequence values you see total 15 records are there. It is starting with a zero and total zero to 14 total 15 records because whenever you use this function, it will start from zero. If you are looking for some specific number, you can add here or you can start from if you want to start from one, you can add plus one. Then it will add it will start from value instead of zero. It will start from one. So this is one of the option. Another option is which we can go with row number, which we can go with row number. So which we can add a new column, which is row number. So row number is one of the function. Row number. It is window function which we need to use a over glass and a window function partition by just I'll go with the total records then order by okay just verify that where it is closing closing properly or not yes Okay, so import these functions from pyspark.sql.functions import row number and the link function and we need to import sql.window import window. So window function we need to import from separate class. This is window class and remaining functions which you can import from this class functions class. Now you see it is added another column which is row number so row number also same if you have a hundred records it will start from one then it will generate sequence values this is sequence ids and these two are available options for sequence ids so another three another three options like if you are going to crc32 md5 sha1 or sha2 so sha1 sh2 and md5 are hash key generated functions and CRC2, CRC32 also will give you sequence IDs, but not continuous sequence IDs, random numbers it will generate. Let's understand that function as well. So we'll add another column using a with column function CRC32, just a key. So we need to import that function CRC32 and input we need to give a column name so unique column name so employee number is unique i'm going to give that column name but this has key generators and crc32 will allow only string value because these are has key functions binary value it will read integers it won't allow let's show you that from pyspark dot sql dot functions input crc32 and uh, display that data so it is raising exception saying that data type issue so this is integer column so we will do the type casting so we will convert into string data type okay so we need to import that function as a call function so just I'm converting into string. Now let's verify the output. The third one is CRC32. So it is generating integer values, but these values is not like either a row number or a sequence IDs. So it is also IDs, but random numbers it will generate. And when you are going for CRC32, and you can expect some duplicates. So it can generate, it can generate or duplicates per 100k or 200k records okay for every thousand or thousand uh, like more than uh, one lakh records if we have crc32 it can generate duplicate okay so if you have a small dimension tables that's okay but if you have a huge data so crc32 is not suggested crc 32 is now suggested. It can generate a duplicate even if you have a 1 million data or 1 lakh or like 100k or 200k records. 
it can generate a duplicates. So CRC32 is not suggested for huge data tables. Then another two functions. So, so now we are done with uh, this function, we are done with this function, we are done with this function. Next MD5. Let's look at MD5 as well. So I'll add a new column, which is MD5. Just I'll add a MD5 with the key, then MD5 function. Then same here also we need to convert into string, employee number, casting, string. So import this function, run pyspark dot sql dot functions, import md5, then display the data. So md5 will give you hash key and 32 bit hash key it will generate for uh, whatever that input it is employee number whatever input is employee number based on that it will generate hash key value it's a 32 bit and it is not suggested for more than uh, 50 million more than 100 million records md5 is not suggested for if you have a huge data more than 50 million more than 100 million if you have then md5 also is not suggested then another function the last one is we can go with the SHA2 SHA to key. So SHA2 is one of the function. We'll have a input is a column name. So column name which is your input, employee number. And then we need to give a second argument is which so the multiple options are available for SHA2, like 256, 512, 256 bits or 512. This will go with the 256 first. I will show you that. Just import this function from pyspark.sql.functions. Import SHA2. And we need to type cast this. So when you go with the SHA2, it will generate a hash key value. You see this. So hash key value it is generated for based on employee number. So SHA2 256, if you have a uh, 50 million or 100 million, if you have more than 200, 300 million, then you can go with the 512 bit. Okay, you can go with the 512 bit. So 512 bit will give a more uh, value, you can see sequence value like this so it will generate hash key value for this employee id for this employee ID. even i can show you that exact output in sql select sha2 employee number one two three and uh, five twelve so one two three four So this is the value it is generated, D404 ending with AD1 DB. If you go there, this is the employee number. For that, SHA key value you can verify. Same value. Okay, same value it is generated. So mainly when you are uh, working in data warehousing project, some scenarios we will delete and reload. When you are deleting and reloading, if you use the row number or if you use the uh, monotonically increasing id there are chances of changing your surrogate key if if your dimension table surrogate key changes then it will impact all fact tables so instead of that uh, md5 if you have a small table it is suggested if you have a bigger table sha2 you can use and uh, you can uh, 256 bits or 512 bit which we can go for that even sha1 also is available but instead of SHA1, SHA2 is suggested for bigger tables. Like if you have a more uh, fact tables, like 100, 200, 300 million records, 
So SSH2 is one of the option. So this way, which we can generate a surrogate keys. These are our available options, which we can generate surrogate key uh, based on data, based on table size. And uh, so as I told you, CRC32, MD5 can generate duplicates. If you have more than uh, 1 million records, even we, we observed uh, uh, less than 1 million records also, it is generating duplicate. But SHA2, uh, even we tested for 200 million, 300 million, I don't, we don't see any duplicates. It is not generating any duplicate hash key. So that's about these uh, sequence IDs, how to generate sequence IDs or hash values, mainly when we are designing uh, data warehouse and uh, surrogate keys. So thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe my channel and let's see you in another video. Thank you.